one of the most iconic pictures of black women doing what she does best with a simple glance letting you know she has a time and is not one to mess with because she will always stand and fight for the rights of her people is Gloria Richardson given the illest side eye while pushing a National Guard's bayonet away. Inspirational and a model for all smart brown girls. As it is Black History Month, let's get into this piece of history and the iconic woman behind the image. Gloria Richardson is a Howard alumni from Eastern Shore, Maryland, more specifically Cambridge, Maryland, where she became heavily involved in the civil rights movement after her daughter joined the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Initially, Richardson, coming from a family well-established in town, wasn't very involved. Rather, she was watching. But as the young members of SNCC, SNCC, took on the civil rights battle cry, going a step further than the more planned marches of Martin Luther King, their commitment to heavily, almost daily protesting for desegregation pushed Richardson to get involved. Shall we take a minute to think about the context of today? Because of the protesting, the National Guard came into Cambridge and after 18 months in support of SNCC, Richardson, along with other parents, formed the SNCC adjacent group, the Cambridge Movement, the only adult group to officially support SNCC. And as Richardson has noted, the NAACP was ineffective because of classisms in the organization. The Cambridge Movement is most notable for being one of the first civil rights groups to take head on the fight for economic equality and social justice, helping to spearhead the evolution of the civil rights movement into the black power era. Richardson helped to broker the Treaty of Cambridge with U.S. Attorney General Robert Kennedy and the Department of Justice. Richardson cut the federal government to agree to five demands, including... In terms of five demands we had, desegregate the hospital, cross desegregate the schools and the buses, uh, provide new housing, and, I, and one or two other things. Then came the August 1963 landmark March on Washington, where Martin Luther King gave his impassioned I Have a Dream speech but also where black women were almost entirely erased from the main stage of the march. Daisy Bates, the organizer of the Little Rock Nine, was the only one to speak for a little over a minute, pledging that This country, Mr. Randolph, pledge to you, to Martin Luther King, Roy Wilkins, and all of you fighting for civil liberty, that we will join hands with you as women of this country. Rosa, Rosa Gregg, my president, Dorothy Height, the National Council of Negro Women, the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, the Methodist Church Women, all the women, pledge that we will join hands with you. We will kneel in, we will sit in until we can eat in any corner in the United States. Only Daisy Bates spoke. Though Richardson was handed the mic, it was promptly taken away, and her, along with Lena Horn, were put in a taxi back to the hotel. They did not even have the opportunity to see firsthand King's speech. So then when they called, they called me, I came from the back, and my, I was gonna tell people to sit there till they pass the Lord, don't leave town. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, hello, and the NAACP guy, snatched the mic. Then they took me and Lena Horn because she had gotten Rosa Parks and was presenting her to the international uh, satellite and things. Media. Media. And when I found that out, I went to help her because there would have been no Martin if it hadn't been Rosa Parks. So I think they were annoyed at both of us, so before Martin spoke, they put us in a taxi and sent us back to the hotel. And they, what was the rationale they gave for that? No, they didn't want us to be crushed. By the big crowds? Yes. Yeah. Getting out. Well, the rest is everybody else on the platform is okay. Let's get to this iconic side eye. What do you read it as her thinking? 
the picture comes from May 1964 back in Cambridge, Maryland, where Richardson, along with the Cambridge movement, are protesting the super bigly bigoted Alabama governor, a segregationist who has noted strong similarities to one number 45, George Wallace's visit to Cambridge. The National Guard was still stationed in Cambridge, attempting to forcefully keep demonstrations and protests from happening. Richardson recounts that they were tear gassed out of a building, rushing into the street and a guard came, came charging at her with his bayonet. And there you have it, a look every black woman so deeply understands and a woman who fought so mercilessly for her community. I encourage you to look up the interviews Gloria Richardson has done with Democracy Now!, the Library of Congress, the history of the partnership between the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and the Cambridge Nonviolent Action Committee or Cambridge Movement in parallel and other times perpendicular to Martin Luther King and crew, the NAACP, and the Nation of Islam. Remember that although we tend to look up history with rose-colored glasses of everyone who helped for a similar mission that achieved achieved greater good was the best of buddies. And the schisms we see today are something only of this generation. But there is beauty in seeing some of the same natural human afflictions and schisms not stop a movement from becoming something that redefines society and culture at large. So you can understand the power in your role and that through great effort, change does come. We just have to keep fighting for the greater good. Thank you to the OG smart brown girl, Gloria Richardson.